Imagine waking up to find your mobile and internet services abruptly disrupted. That's what millions of customers experienced due to an extensive cyber attack on Kyivstar, a Ukrainian telecom operator. This was no simple technical glitch. This was an orchestrated assault that disrupted the digital lifelines of countless individuals. The scale of the cyber attack was immense. It wasn't just a few hundred or thousand customers left in the lurch, we're talking millions. Millions of people who woke up to find their means of communication cut off, their digital world silenced, and the assault didn't stop at disrupting services. The attack led to the destruction of thousands of virtual servers and computers. This wasn't just about causing a temporary inconvenience. This was a calculated move to inflict significant damage, to cripple the infrastructure that keeps information flowing and people connected. This cyber attack was a stark reminder of the vulnerability of our digital world. It was a wake-up call that our interconnected lives can be disrupted with a few calculated moves by those with malicious intent. This attack wasn't just a minor hiccup in the digital realm. It was a massive assault on the infrastructure that keeps us connected. Behind this digital onslaught were the notorious Russian state-sponsored threat actors, Sandworm and Solnsepyok. These cyber predators have a long, dark history. Sandworm, for example, is no stranger to causing havoc in the digital realm. This group has been linked to the Russian Military Intelligence Agency, the GRU, and has a well-documented record of disruptive cyber attacks. As for Solnsepyok, this group is equally infamous. Like a digital hydra, it rears its head time and again, leaving a trail of chaos in its wake. This time, they've stepped into the limelight, claiming responsibility for the breach on Kyivstar's systems. These groups are not just hackers. They're highly organized, state-sponsored cyber soldiers, wielding their keyboards like weapons on the front lines of a new kind of warfare. They're part of a larger, more sinister picture, one in which entire nations are held at ransom by lines of code. These cyber marauders have once again left their mark, disrupting lives and causing extensive damage. In the face of such a cyber catastrophe, how did Kyivstar and the Ukrainian authorities respond? As the dust settled, Kyivstar launched into action, restoring their operations and pulling their systems back online. It was a painstaking process, akin to reassembling a digital jigsaw puzzle. But the telecom operator made it through the storm. What's more, they confirmed that no subscriber data was compromised in the attack. Yes, you heard it right. Despite the chaos, customer data remained secure, a silver lining in the midst of the cyber onslaught. Meanwhile, the Ukrainian authorities weren't just sitting idle either. The Security Service of Ukraine, also known as the SBU, made an announcement that turned heads. They had successfully taken down not one, but two hacked surveillance cameras. These weren't just ordinary cameras, mind you. They were allegedly being used by Russian intelligence agencies to spy on defense forces and critical infrastructure in Kyiv. Despite the cyber onslaught, the response was swift, ensuring the restoration of services and protection of customer data. However, the attack on Kyivstar leaves us with more questions than answers. How did these threat actors penetrate the network? Was it a sophisticated zero-day exploit or a simple case of human error? The exact method remains a mystery, fueling concerns about the potential implications of this attack. Could this intrusion method be replicated in other systems worldwide? And if so, how many are already compromised without our knowledge? We're left in a state of uncertainty, wondering if our current cybersecurity measures are enough to prevent such attacks. These questions are not just about Kyivstar or Ukraine. They're about every individual, every business, every government that relies on digital infrastructure. They're about the future of cybersecurity on a global scale. What steps do we need to take to fortify our defenses? How do we stay one step ahead of those who seek to disrupt and destroy? As we step further into the digital age, the question remains, are we prepared for the cyber threats that lurk in the shadows?